Hello, Video Game Hunter here, and welcome to my review. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. You guys might have heard of this game before. Most likely from the angry video game nerd, saying it's the worst game he ever played. He also said to stay away from this awful piece of shit. Don't even buy it, not even for a penny. Well, sadly, I paid 10 bucks for mine, complete in box. Why? Because I want to give you guys my personal input on this game. Is it really that bad? Do I really want to go back in time and just kill myself from ever playing it? Well, I guess not since I'm still here. So, no further ado, let's pop this game in and give it a go. Once you start up the game and get to the main selection screen, you are greeted with a nice, creepy music, while a hand is slowly reaching up for the start selection, which gives you a nice, creepy atmosphere before the game starts. The object of the game is to get Dr. Jekyll to go to his wedding, so he can marry his fiancée, Miss Millicent. However, along the way, a lot of misfortune is happening to him. It seems like the whole town, including the animals, is out to get him. The town folks are running right into him, the birds are trying to take crap on him, and this maniac keeps leaving bombs in front of him. My god, what do they have against this guy? Well, that's actually an easy answer. If you own the original manual to the game, it gives you some small details about each character, and only two actually hold a grudge against him. Billy Pones has a crush on Dr. Jekyll's fiance, Miss Millicent. So, to get back at him, he shoots a slingshot at him. And Rachel, who is a lonely widow who won't hurt anyone except for Dr. Jekyll. Mainly because he reminds of her of her late husband. Which something tells me. He didn't die by accident, did he? However, the main bad guy you need to watch out for is the Bomb Maniac. Because he actually does the most damage, and he also pops up the most. But sometimes he'll be at the bottom of the screen and lay his bombs there. Which doesn't make sense, because no matter how close you get to his bombs, it just won't hurt you. I'm guessing the reason the programmers did this is just to keep you on your toes and to throw you off. Now I'm guessing you're wondering, is there anything in this game I can use to defend myself from these enemies? Well that's a yes and a no. I'm saying yes because you do have a cane to use as a weapon. And I'm saying no because it doesn't hurt anyone except for the bees and I recommend killing them as soon as possible. If not, they're just gonna keep flying around and sometimes when you think you'll fall away enough to pass them up, they just get in your way again and it gets a little annoying. So, kill them as soon as possible. The two balls on top of the screens are your health and stress bar. Whenever you get hurt, one of these will go down. It's usually the stress bar, but sometimes it will be the health bar. If your stress bar goes all the way down, then the game will stop and you'll transform into Mr. Hyde. However, if your stress and health goes all the way down, not only you'll transform into Mr. Hyde, but you would die instantly once the transformation is complete. However, this won't happen as much as long you stay away from the bomb's maniac's bombs. When you start playing as Mr. Hyde, that's when the game starts getting fun. Because unlike Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde actually kills his enemies. Which, by the way, Mr. Hyde's enemies are a little more creative than Dr. Jekyll's. 
I never seen a bat that's shaped like a gun. Or that snake-like creature that just appears out of nowhere. It's just plain creepy. And that's good because I'm kind of sick of seeing the same old common monster like werewolves and vampires. It's great that I'm seeing something new. Well, anyway, you can kill these creatures either by punching them or using Psycho Wave. Using Psycho is actually a lot more useful than punching your enemies. Because punching your enemies is a little difficult since most of your enemies are either flying or jumping. And the best way to defeat these enemies is using Psycho Wave. Which by the way, to use Psycho Wave, you have to press up and B. Not the most complicated button combination, but this actually took me a while to figure out because I wasn't aware of this ability first time playing. Not until I finally decided to read the manual. Also, after killing a certain amount of your enemies, you will start to regain some of your stress meter back. And after it gets 4, you will transform back into Dr. Jekyll. And not only that, once your transformation is complete, you will gain some of your health back. I bet you're asking, why do you want to transform back into Dr. Jekyll when it's a lot more fun playing as Mr. Hyde. Well, because you can't beat the game just by playing as Mr. Hyde. Once Mr. Hyde meets up the same amount of distance as Dr. Jekyll did, the game screen will start to flicker and lightning will strike Mr. Hyde. And he dies. So, it's game over. And you'll be taken back to the main menu where you can select continue and go back to the level where you've left off as Dr. Jekyll. One last thing I like to talk about Mr. Hyde before moving on. Sometimes Mr. Hyde's enemies will leave behind coins. Collecting his coins can help you once you transform back into Dr. Jekyll. Because the lady who sings her musical notes is very annoying and hard to avoid. So the best way to pass her is to collect the coins when you're Mr. Hyde. I think you need like 10 or so coins. And after that, just walk up to her and she will take your coins automatically. Yeah, take my money and shut up, bitch. The controls of the game are kinda okay. When you play as Dr. Jekyll, the controls work pretty well. But when you're trying to kill a bee, it kinda lags a little. This is caused by me pressing the B button constantly. I mean, how can you blame me for this? All I want to do is kill this dang on bee and move on. Other than that, the controls for Mr. High work pretty well. I found no issues with him. The levels in the game aren't that great. That goes for both Dr. Jekyll and Mr. High. Both of them pretty much have the same concept. Just keep moving to the left, or just keep moving to the right, dodge that enemy, kill that enemy. Pretty much the only thing that changes from level to level is the scenery. And maybe one or two enemies would be different. The hardest level in the game is actually level 4 as Dr. Jekyll. The town folks are all over the place and they keep running and stopping. And this really gets frustrating because I don't know when to jump over them. What gets really irritating is that bomb maniac guy. Like I said earlier, he pops up the most. But he's popping up at the worst time now. If you can manage to beat this level, the rest of the game is a walk in the park. The last level is nothing special. You just keep jumping over barrels. Kinda like Donkey Kong, except no giant ape. And the bomb maniac does keep popping up as usual. However, in this point of the game, he's pretty easy to avoid. But you might transform into Mr. Hyde a couple of times, since this level is kind of long. The last thing I like to talk about is the boss. Yes, there is a boss in this game. However, there's only one, but you don't have to fight him. He's more of an optional boss. However, if you want a better ending, this is how you do it. First, you have to get Dr. Jekyll to the last level, which is level 6. After that, try hurting yourself by getting close to the bombs maniac's bombs, so your stress can go all the way down. But be careful, you don't want your health to go all the way down too, because if you do, you have to start all over. Now, get Mr. High to the end of the last level. You're most likely going to transform back to Dr. Jekyll, 
but that's okay. Just hurt yourself enough to become Mr. Hyde again. If you're worried about getting striked by lightning, don't worry about it. Once you reach the last level as Dr. Jekyll, the lightning bolts will stop appearing. So anyway, once you reach the end of the last level, which is the church's gate, your stress meter will go all the way down and then the boss will appear. Really, the boss is just a floating head that Mr. Hyde encounters a couple of times that keeps appearing and disappearing. Except this time, instead of being green, it's red. Nevertheless, he's really not that hard to beat. This is actually one of the easiest boss that I ever defeated. Just keep jumping around and shoot your psycho wave at him. And once you restore your stress meter, the boss is defeated and you transfer back into Dr. Jekyll. Once your transformation is complete, just keep walking to the right. There won't be any more enemies for you to encounter. They just all disappear. Once you reach the end of the level, the game is over and you are treated with a crappy ending. I know I said if you beat this boss you receive a better ending, but really, it's just one ending is longer than the other one. So really, there's nothing to see here. To wrap things up, this is a bad game, but not as bad as people made it out to be. It's just, you really have to know how to play this game, and having the manual actually helps. But I'll give it this much, it is interesting what they were trying to do. Having you play as a good doctor with a split personality, but to beat this game you have to play as a good guy most of the time and he barely gets to kill anything. While the evil side is a lot more fun, it's just you can't beat this game just by playing Mr. Hyde. If there's anything positive I can say about this game, is that they were created with Mr. Hyde's enemies, and the music when you turn on the game is pretty spooky. And besides, if there's any game that deserves nothing but shit, I'll let you know. That's it for today. This is Video Game Hunter, and until next time, goodbye. The All Around Gamer Production.